Hi, I'm Craig Sigal, mental toughness trainer for youth sports. I had the opportunity to interview Daniel John, president of Max Sports Conditioning and former D1 baseball player. And he gives us his views on how to create that kind of mental toughness that is required at the D1 level. So um, I think it's a combination of things. I think it's, yes, you need to find somebody um, who can bring out a little extra in you, but then as soon as you recognize that it's there, you need to hold t fast to that and hold tight to it. And you need to, you need to learn how to hold yourself accountable and be highly self-disciplined about what, you, you know, what you're trying to do. And it, it, if you really want to achieve the goal, then you're going to do what's necessary, right? But you just got to ask yourself how bad do you really want to achieve it. Are you willing to sacrifice everything that, that you need to sacrifice to achieve the goal or not? There's, there's only one way. You're, you're either going this direction or you're, you're going this direction. I'm either moving towards my goal or I'm moving away from it. Right? There is no staying the same. Right? I'm only right. getting older. Right. And there's only other people who are eventually I'm going to be competing with who are either moving towards or away from their goals. So I'm either doing, I, every day I wake up, I either do things that I need to do to move towards my goal or I do things that I need to do to move away from my goal. So when you think about um, just the public in general, I think that we are just, our society, our culture is just that we are far too ready to make excuses for ourselves and ready to um, give reasons why we can't achieve you know our potential or, or a particular goal, and I think that, that this is along the same lines. I think that you know we see a lot of times we see athletes coming in and say, "Well, gosh, you know, I'm feeling a little down, or feeling a little sick, or I'm feeling a little sore, I'm feeling this." And the bottom, I mean, for athletes, it's easy because look, you got to play Saturday whether you feel good or not. Okay? Yeah, you know, the, 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 I'm gonna on Sunday. I'm gonna open up the paper and I'm gonna the, to read the box score and. I like to tell athletes love this a lot, right? I said, how many times have you ever opened up the newspaper, looked at the Mariners box score, and read um, read that there was a, there was a little L for loss, um, but then there was a little maybe a little asterisk next to it, and down at the bottom says, well, Ichiro didn't really feel too good, <laughs> right? Never, okay? It never happens. So you got to perform whether you feel good or not. That's awesome. Okay, and and so it happens all the time, and so you know I think that there's. There's times when, you know, as, as uh, in this profession, as conditioning professionals, that we need to take those things into consideration because, you know, at some, sometimes there's uh, folks who are injured and we need to make adjustments and things like that. But most of the time, it, it, it doesn't matter how you feel. You've still got to do what you need to do, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it's a habit. It's a totally 100% a habit. You know, for, for folks, and I think it's athletes and, and everyone else as well. No matter what, um, the 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 incident or what, what, whatever it was, the failure, whatever they just experienced, yeah. we got to channel that energy. Okay, it's just the, the energy's there, but it's just got to be channeled in the right direction. So we've got to redirect the energy back onto the path of achievement. Okay, so here's my goal. I got my. I, I, I think that I've really steered myself off the path. Yeah. Right. That's the belief that these right. athletes have steered themselves off the path. We got to redirect their energy and let them realize, no, you really haven't. You've only become stronger. It's only now. Now, when you experience a situation like this again, you'll only be more ready for it and more prepared for it and better. And 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 and, and you're better because of it. Okay, and that takes, you know, and that, that, that is a, a difficult thing um, for, for a coach a lot of times, right? And it, and it changes a little bit with who you're working with. Okay, so uh, I talk to our coaches here quite a bit about um, the different communication styles just within each, the culture of each sport. So, you know, we, can, we have to communicate with soccer players different than, differently than we communicate with football players, right? Because they respond differently to different kinds of things just because of the nature of the sport. So, you know, within, within that energy channeling, right, there, there's some difference in language. But other than that, that's really all I'm saying is I'm trying to redirect their energy and get them, get them to realize that, you know what, you're not off the beaten path. 
Okay, we're still going the right direction. You're still doing what you need to do. So, boom, it's done. That's the other thing is that is that athletes, um, they've got to have real short memories. They've got to have real short memories. One of the things that really stands out about the Mental Toughness Academy and Craig Sigel's program uh, is, is how it actually touches on those specific areas of weakness. The academy is, is really designed to allow uh, young athletes to take the information and use it. We have had the benefit of sending a number of athletes to Craig Sigel, and every time we do, he sends them back more prepared, mentally tougher, more ready for performance than I've ever seen. As a former collegiate player and a coach, I highly, highly recommend that, that you check this program out and that you check out the Mental Toughness Academy.